On September 12, 1962, at the dawn of the space age, President John F. Kennedy gave a speech at Rice University in which he made a bold commitment to achieving the goal of landing a man on the moon before the end of the decade and returning him safely to Earth. America's third manned space program following Mercury and Gemini, Project Apollo was conceived to carry out the President's goal. The first lunar landing took place on July 20, 1969, when Apollo 11 Commander Neil Armstrong and Lunar Module Pilot Buzz Aldrin piloted their lunar module they called Eagle to a safe landing on a large lunar plane known as the Sea of Tranquility. The astronauts returned safely to Earth on July 24, 1969, thus achieving President Kennedy's goal with months to spare. In all, there were 11 manned Apollo missions, of which 9 flew to the moon, and of those, 6 included lunar landings. Apollo 16 was the 10th manned Apollo flight, and the 5th to land on the moon. Apollo 16 was commanded by astronaut John Young. Already a veteran of three space flights, he was one of only three Apollo astronauts to fly to the moon twice. The command module pilot was Ken Mattingly, perhaps best remembered for being bumped from the ill-fated Apollo 13 flight after fear surfaced he might get sick with measles during the mission. The role of lunar module pilot was filled by Charlie Duke. Duke served as capsule communicator during the historic flight of Apollo 11 and broadcast directly with the astronauts as they made their historic landing on the moon. Scheduled for an early afternoon liftoff, the astronauts began suiting up early. Prepped and ready to go, the crew of Apollo 16 headed to the vehicle that would transfer them to the launch pad to their awaiting Saturn V rocket that would launch them to the moon. Once they arrived at the launch pad, an army of technicians helped the astronauts through the hatch to take their seats for launch. T-25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, guidance release, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, we have ignition sequence start. The engine's now building up to 7.7 .7 million pounds of thrust. We have a launch commit and we have a liftoff. The swing arm moving back. The Saturn V lifting off the power. Alpha pad building up thrust. We clear the tower. Houston is now controlling. Oh, yeah, good thrust in all five. Roger. Pitch and roll program started. Done. Roger. 16 now maneuvering to his proper uh, flight path attitude. Mark 27 seconds. Thirty-six seconds, roll program completed, pitch profile still in progress, forty seconds. Mark fifty seconds, cabin pressure relieving, adjusting now from sea level to a space environment, two nautical miles in altitude. Ten miles, hold one bravo. Under mark, one bravo. You're wet now, sixteen. Roger. That call up from Capcom Gordon Fullerton says Apollo 16 now capable of water landing. Mark 1 minute 12 seconds coming up on period of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. One minute 22 seconds, six nautical miles in altitude, looking good. Mark 1 minute 30 seconds, eight nautical miles in altitude. Mark, one minute, 41 seconds. Pass through Max Q, still looking good. Get through Max Q and everything looks good. 16 now, 12.5 nautical miles in altitude. Young Duke Mattingly moving out to the outer traces of the Earth's atmosphere. Stand by, remote one, Charlie. Roger, we're Mark, one, Charlie. Mark, two minutes, three seconds. The status check and mission control by Flight Director Gene Kranz. A go, no go for staging. Coming up on center engine shutdown. Put your inboard, your go for staging. Center engine shut down on time. 
2 minutes 28 seconds, 26 nautical miles in altitude, 32 nautical miles downrange. 2 minutes 35 seconds. 2 minutes 40 seconds coming up on staging. Staging. Accurate ignition on the S2. Roger. 2 minutes 53 seconds. A normal staging. Your young Duke Mattingly now riding on five good second stage engines. Go and I'll live on the S2. Once airborne, it took the crew approximately 12 minutes to reach orbit. Once in orbit, the crew readied themselves and their spacecraft for a final burn of their rocket engine to take them on their nearly 250,000 mile trip to the moon. Their destination, the Descartes Highlands just south of the moon's equator. During their four day trip to the moon, the astronauts would call the command module home and office. Originally situated high atop the Saturn V rocket, the conical-shaped vessel has behind it a cylindrical-shaped component called the service module, and behind that a bell-shaped rocket nozzle. To achieve the goal of landing on the moon, a landing vehicle called the lunar module was developed. Nestled in a protective housing, it was the command module pilot's job to pluck the vehicle from its cocoon to be ferried to the moon. After traveling through the void of space with their lunar landing vehicle in tow, the Apollo 16 astronauts arrived at the moon and entered lunar orbit approximately 74 hours after liftoff. After about 20 hours in lunar orbit, Commander John Young and lunar module pilot Charlie Duke boarded the lunar module through a tunnel adjoining it to the command module. Command module pilot Ken Mattingly would remain on board the command module in orbit around the moon. Once separated, each spacecraft was given a name. The command module was called Casper, and the lunar module was called Orion. After a six-hour delay to troubleshoot an engine problem in the command module, Young and Duke began their descent to the lunar surface. Then, on April 20th at 8.23 p.m. Houston time, Young and Duke landed Orion just slightly north and west of the designated landing area. Apollo 16 was only the second mission to employ the use of the lunar roving vehicle. The LRV allowed Young and Duke to traverse 16 miles over the moon. During their three-day stay on the lunar surface, Young and Duke performed three separate moonwalks totaling nearly 20 hours and 15 minutes, during which they performed more experiments than any other mission up to that time and collected over 210 pounds of lunar samples. Prior to taking his final steps on the lunar surface, astronaut Duke made good on a promise he made to his kids by depositing a photograph of his family on the moon. Once ready for takeoff, a button was pushed and the upper half of the lunar module, also called the ascent stage, raced skyward, leaving behind the bottom of the lunar module which doubled as a launch pad. Orion continued its climb off the lunar surface and eventually rendezvoused with Casper, the two spacecraft reconnected while in orbit around the moon, allowing astronauts Duke and Young, along with their lunar samples, to transfer back to the command module for the long ride home. Never designed for the trip back to Earth, the lunar module Orion was jettisoned and eventually crashed into the moon. Then on April 27, 1972, Casper re-entered the Earth's atmosphere ahead of a splashdown in the southern Pacific Ocean nearly 266 hours after taking off from the Kennedy Space Center. 16, the computer's yours, and I've got your recovery information. The computer's good. 2,000 foot scattered, 10 miles, southeast at 10 knots, 3 feet wave height. Your recovery ship is... Ticonderoga, and the aircraft is recovering. Roger, understand. Thank you much. Velocity beginning to build up now, uh, quite rapidly, now reading uh, 19,024 feet per second. It's Apollo Control, Houston, an observer on the Ticonderoga estimates the distance uh, from the ship about uh, one mile. Flash, Dan. Flash. 
This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we copied time of splashdown as uh, 290 hours, uh, 37 minutes, uh, 6 seconds, ground elapsed time. You saw an example of goal-oriented teamwork in action. The kind of thing that made this country great and the kind of thing that's going to keep it that way.